ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਆ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਆਈ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਯੂ ਵਿਲ ਨੋਟਿਸ ਦਿਸ ਕੀਤਨ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਦ ਸਪੀਕਰਸ ਵਨ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਇਟਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲੀ ਬੈਟਰ ਕੀਪਨ ਦੈਨ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਦੈਟ ਕਮਸ ਆਊਟ ਆਫ ਮਾਈ ਮਾਊਥ ਥੈਟਸ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਥਿੰਗ ਆ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਥਿੰਗ ਇਜ਼ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਵਨ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਇਨ ਪੋਸਟ ਸੈਕੰਡਰੀ ਆਮ ਆ ਹੈਡ ਅ ਫਿਲਮ ਥਿਓਰੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਟੂ ਟੀਚ ਜਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਫਿਲਮ ਐਂਡ ਵਨ ਹੀ ਬੀ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ um just in the background he had film scores coming up so we'd be learning about star wars and it was like da, 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 da. so um it was cool i really liked it um that and when when not if but when you get bored of me talking uh you could listen to keep them it's better than anything that's going to come out of my mouth um so the track you're listening to is by the gentle people saying the dula uh dula ji's track from toronto samagam 2000 uh where he sings ram kali ki baat and now karta ka dil kare ke upar bole to ki bada the beautiful track if you want to download it it's on the internet uh so the topic of today is discovery of history now if you guys know me um at all then you'll know that history is definitely my passion i studied in university i didn't finish studying yet but i started um i studied in university uh sick history has been a part of my life my entire life growing up uh, whether it was reading books whether it was learning from my mom um other family members of the sangat been a huge part of my life um but those of you that know me really well know that 99 times out of 100 if i had to choose between reading a book uh, and learning history and listening to keep them i would choose let me keep the 99 times out of 100 um so what might be more expected is for me to just talk about sikh history uh specifically sikh history here in vancouver which is my passion uh definitely is my passion but um that's not what i want to do today because what i feel like happens is we separate sick history from the rest of sick history right or we make sick history just down to a bunch of stories right i wish they are just great stories they're phenomenal stories uh but we don't under, we don't step back and understand them in a wider context um of what they mean in relation to the rest of gurbani to the rest of what we practice and what they mean in relation to uh there you go oh that's me again. <laughs> uh and what they mean in relation to just the world. So that's where I want to start before we even start talking about Sikhi. Uh let's just talk about history. Um and history in the world. So a global perspective on history. And what I want to do really quickly is just cell phones off please. <laughs> uh what I want to do really quickly is just go through a few well-known quotes, some of them well-known, some of them not at all, and just talk about the different aspects of history why it's important to us as just as humans. right um i can't say this word I, it's a language in africa uh ewemina it's a, it's a proverb though it's a saying um uh, in this uh language this african language uh, it's a pop- popular one we've heard many variations of it but what it says is until the lion has his or her own story his or her own storyteller the hunter will always have the best part of the story and we popularly hear this as uh this uh, history is written by by the winners or uh and this one too it has other variations um but what does that mean what does that mean that if minds don't learn to write their own history um is that that story never gets told right it's a, it's a tale lost to time and it's really unfortunate in sikhi as well how much we've lost just because we haven't taken the time or effort or haven't been able to take the time and effort to preserve our stories and when you don't have those stories you can't inform the present with them right if you don't have those stories you can't use those um it's it's unknown and if you don't have that knowledge then how are you supposed to take that into account when you're moving forward so it's about justice first and foremost history is about justice if we want a just world going forward we need to look at the world behind us secondly uh i always talk about malcolm x i love malcolm x uh so this isn't a popular quote but history is a people's memory uh and without a memory man is demoted to the lower animals powerful it's a big statement right they say that you might as well be a pasu if you're not going to study history if you're not going to know your history but it's a people's memory okay and just like just like our own memory informs us in the future the people's memory informs the people in the future um but more importantly history puts you into a community right it's important to be part of a community whether it's a subculture whether it's being a sikh whether it's being a punjabi whether it's being a south asian whether it's being a canadian or whether it's being a global citizen it puts you it anchors you in that community it's very important for that reason uh number 3 there's only four of them uh, which only that's a lot 
Uh, there's four of them. Uh, George Santayana, I think that's how you say it. Uh, he, was a, he was a philosopher. Um, and this is a popular quote, I mean, in, in many variations. When experience is not retained, as among savages, infancy is perpetual. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And that we hear all the time, is that those that don't learn history are doomed to repeat their mistakes, or something like that, right? We hear it in many different forms, since we're, from when you're about a teenager, you straight when you get in high school. But this is the quote in its, in its rudimentary form. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. But the most powerful thing in that statement to me is, infancy is perpetual. It means you never grow. You never grow if you don't learn from the past. So growth. Growth is the next big thing in history. And then finally, this is a big one, uh, and I can't say it anymore, I'm not even try it, but he's, he's a philosopher. Um, another philosopher, a Greek philosopher, um, he has another really popular quote, um, but I chose this one instead. Uh, For the whole earth is the tomb of famous men. Not only are they commemorated by columns and inscriptions in their own country, but in foreign lands there dwells also an unwritten memorial of them. Graven not on stone, but in the hearts of men. Make them your examples. And esteeming courage to be freedom, and freedom to be happiness, do not weigh too lightly, too nicely, the perils of war. Oh, the quotation marks in the wrong place. Um, the, the, I love this quote. I absolutely love this quote. I always have. Um, it's so powerful, and there's so many gems in there of knowledge. But the one, again, that I want to uh, stress for today is make them your examples. Right? History is about education at the end of the day. Right? It's learning. It's taking great people from the past. How do we emulate what they did? How do we um, incorporate what they did into our lives? And then vice versa, how, what did bad people do? Or people that did terrible things, why did they do them? Which is something we often overlook. Why did people that did terrible things do what they did? And how can we avoid ha that happening again? So there's a really kind of quick, a quick and easy kind of global perspective on history, just through popular quotes. Um, and now I want to do the same thing but with Gurbani. And just one, one Pankti, because um, the first time I heard, oh sorry about that, the first time I ever heard this Pankti, um, it, it, like, something, something changed in me, because, um, I mean, someone might take it differently, but for me it was that this is history, and that's this Pankti right here by Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj, which goes, Babarniya Kahaniya Pot Sapot Karim. And the English translation, the stories of one's ancestors make children good children. And if you look at different steaks in Punjabi, you get different arts, but both are pretty popular that Babarnia. Uh, Baba can refer here to either Guru Sahib, and so Babarnia Kahaniya Pot Sapot Karin, that the stories of Guru Sahib make children good children, right? That they make people obedient, they make people great. Um, other art that comes to Babarnia means ancestors, like it says here, or elders, right? Which is Gursix. And to me, I like take either Bhangti, because it means it means the same thing, right? If the stories of the Gurus will make you a great Sikh, the stories of Gursix will too. Right? There's not a whole lot of difference. We I mean we read it, uh, some of us read it at Asaf every day, Har Har Jandoy Ekha, Vidbachar Kashnani, right? There's no difference between Akal Bhak and the servant. None. There's no difference between Guru Sahib and the Gursik. Um, and then the next Pankti, which is Jisat Gurpav as Somandalan, Sayi Karankari. And the English translation again, they accept what is pleasing to the will of the true Guru and act accordingly. Make them your examples, like the philosopher said. Right? Make them your examples. And here it's all about living a Gursikh Ki Jeevan. But all those four things, in my opinion, uh, in my view, are living a Gursikh Ki Jeevan justice, growth, education and community. All four of those things are inherent parts of being a Sikh. Inherent parts of being a Sikh. So the global perspective, broken up into four Pankti, I feel like is captured in this one Pankti right here. Babarniya kahaniya put sabot kari. Phenomenally, phenomenally important. And I think uh, it's fitting that Guru Amr Das Ji, um, that this Pankti came from their Mokulak. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but. The reason I consider history so important is that history has what I would say the highest honor in Sikhi, and that it has a place in Gurbani. Anything worth mentioning in this entire world has been said in Gurbani. 
has been said in Sayyid Guru Al-Granth Sahib, he has been said in Sayyid Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, his Barni Pai Nandal Hadith Pai Gadaas Ji. Barni incorporates every single thing that ever needed to be said in this world. We could all just shut up, right, for the rest of our lives. And speaking of Barni, I mean, and there's, there's stories about uh, Baba Sham Singh Ji, who was uh, Darbar Sahib Raghi, and uh, towards the end of their life, they only spoke in Barni Pai, that's you know, popularly said. Um, and they realize everything else is just white noise, right? Gurbani is the truth at the end of the day. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that. History's place in Gurbani. Where does it belong? How does it fit in? And there's so many examples of it, right? It's not like Guru Sahib talked about that one Bhakti, Babarni, Akaaniya. But uh, Gurbani draws upon historical examples and details of history. It does both, right? Um, cultural stories. You read Gurbani, there's lots, lots of allusions to things that have happened in the past. Right? And, and you need to have that history to fully understand the context of Gurbani and what Gurbani is trying to say. The for example, the picture on the bottom, if you look right here, is the Raja Janak. Right? And I'm not gonna, what you're going to notice today is I'm not going to tell you a whole, well, I'm going to tell you a whole bunch of stories. I'm not going to tell you, pr pretty much none of the stories will be in detail. The reason being is because if you want a story in detail, I'm just looking at the Sangat right now, Pai Sahib Jitinder Singh, Pai Gurkira Singh, Pai Pradeep Singh, Pai Tajinder Singh, uh, Amadeep Singh got up here, but Amadeep Singh too, but he's not going to talk, right? These guys could tell you stories, um, and this count, this, uh, there's so many of you guys, that could get up here um, and do that way better than I can, right? Go through Suraj Prakash, give the play-by-play -play exactly what happened. Um, go through other historical sources and give you the play-by-play -play exactly what happened. I don't want to do that, um, because everyone does it so wonderfully, right? What I want to do today is kind of... Uh, broaden our appreciation of history, what it means to us. Um, so I'm going to go also over a lot of stories, just to understand <coughs> again the relevance to Gurbani. So again, first, Raja Janak, I'm not going to get into the story at all. Um, but if you know it, and there's other countless examples too. Um, Varam Bhai Gurdasji. Bhai Gurdasji is a, a, a great example. I mean, from the time of Guru Sahib, in, in Barney, Bhai Gurdasji has already started scribing, has already started scribing what Guru Sahib has been doing, where they've been. Fir Baba Gya Bagdadno, right? Um, and there's so many from Pai Gurdasji, but what really, really strikes me as super interesting from Pai Gurdasji is that Pai Gurdasji even um, in their vast wrote uh, a section called Sikh Nam Avali, which is just a collection, an inventory of all the Sikhs that were living in, in which time. So Sikhs of Guru Nanak Devi, and then there's a party just detailing so many Sikhs of Guru Nanak Devi. Not all of them, but a bunch of them. Then Guru Amr Das Ji, then it goes to different areas of Punjab, Punjab they say, it goes into Lahore they say, it goes into a, a, like a whole bunch of different things, right? So, Pai Das Ji understood this, that this is important information, we need to document it, right? And documented it alongside their jewels uh, that, they've, that, that they've given us in other parts of their body. Of, of their body. Documented it alongside other stories that have historical illusions. Rati Jai Sunai Kurbani, for example, <coughs> right? Alongside these other stories that are drawing historical illusions, Pai Gurdas Ji has also decided that it's equally important just to have a name of all, name, the names of all the Sikhs that are living at this time. It's huge, right? It's, it's a big statement. Because Pai Gurdas Ji's Vaj, we might know, have been called the Kunji to Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj, to understanding Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj. That is the key to understanding Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So again, it's not to be understated. Uh, the next one, uh, Vichitra Nadek, right? Guru Gobind Singh Ji's phenomenal work. Um, what an amazing burning. And the shabs that we read on a daily basis, um, whether just in, in our everyday lives or when we go to the Gurdwara Sahib or on Gurdwara or whatever, um, Vichitra Nadek encompasses all of this. Vichitra Nadek goes from um, a history of lineages, right? Which leads to the Bedi Kos and the Sodi Vans of Guru Gobind Singh Ji and Guru Nanak Dev Ji, it goes into Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Pishla Janam, their own story, Avni Katha Bukhano, right? And then it goes from there into Guru Gobind Singh Ji's current life and a detailed Sikh history for us, after all of that, right? It shows the relevance between those two things, that they need to coexist, they need to <coughs> cooperate for us to, for us to understand Guru Bani, for us to live a Guru Sikh Ji So Bajita Nautik again, a phenomenal example, and the last one is what we're listening to right now, Ram Kali Ki Ram Kali Ki Wad, um, often when we hear the story of Ram Kali Ki Wad, Pai Balwan Pai Sattari, we hear that they did Nindya of Guru Sahib and then it was rectified, or when it was rectified, 
uh, when they asked for forgiveness and all that stuff. And then they composed Ram Kali Ki Wad, which sang the praises of the Guru, which is the opposite of an Inda. And it is, and it's true. But I would also say that they challenged the history of the Sikh kingdom. For those that don't know, what happened was, the reason that Pai Satan Pai Parmaraji got executed was because um, they made the allegation against Guru Sahib, among others, but the big one was that they said the only reason Guru Nanak Dana Pai Mardana Karke, Pai Mardana Ji Le Hath Karke, Pai Mardana Rabab Karke, that they put the Gursik, amazing Gursik Pai Mardana Ji, they put the Gursik above the Guru, right? They put the music above the Gurban. That doesn't just, that's not just Nindya Guru Sahib, that challenges the very history of the Sikh kingdom, right? Is that you're establishing a precedent that this can go on forever now? Is that if we flip the switch here, then in 50 years people can keep that switch flipped, right? And then where would it be? They challenged the history, which was a big deal. They challenged the history, and what did they do when they rectified it? They told the actual history of the Sikh kingdom. What was it, right? And we're listening to it now. Now, Karta, 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 Kyo, Guru, Guru, Yo, Kiva. And there's little gems of history hidden in that, hidden in that shelf too. Little gems of history. Um, for example, Fair Vasaya, Fair Wan, Satgur, Khadur. It's the first, first Pankti of one of the bodies. And what does it mean? It's uh, sorry, I'm, I'm totally going off. This isn't what I planned at all. I'm just talking now. Fair Vasaya, Fair Wan, Satgur, Khadur, which is saying that then the son of Fairu. Right? Baba Feru Malgu was uh, the Pitaji of Sri Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj. Fer Vasaya, Fer one Satguru Khadur. Then Satguru Ji came to Khadur Sahib. So they gave us geography, they gave us the family tree of Guru Sahib in that one little Bhakti. Right? But one Kiwi Nek Jan just Bhakti Shah Patradi. They mentioned Mata Kiwi Ji. Who otherwise, outside Gurbani, isn't mentioned. Or Langar Daulat Vandiya Ras Amrit Kheer Kyali. From that, we know that Kheer was distributed. Was distributed in Langar at that time, at, at the hands of Mata Kiviji. Those are two separate, separate Bhaktis. But these little tiny gems of history, and they matter, right? They do matter. Because, I mean, history is happening right now, and it still matters. It mattered back then, too. The big thing I'm trying to get across with this slide right now, is that we can't separate history and Gurban. Once you do, there's problems. Good things happen too. Outside, outside of living Gursiki, even good things happen too. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But mostly there are problems. Right? Because people can't reconcile the two. But the two are made to coexist. Right? So, um, and a lot of shabds in Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj um, and uh, in our other Gurbani as well have Uthangas or have like backstory, history, backgrounds. Right? And there's popular ones, I mean, some of you guys might be familiar with uh, Sulhi Te Narayan Rak. Sulhi Te Narayan Rak, which is about Sulhi Khan, the army general who was sent to kill Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj, to assassinate Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj. He failed, and how he failed was his, his, his tarwad fell out of his hand, landed on his neck, cut his head off, and his body fell into a kiln, and he got burned alive. And all of that is detailed in this shop by Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj. You know what we call that in history? We call that a primary source. Right? That's a primary source. That's huge. A lot of people can't say that. A lot of faiths, especially, can't say that their own, their own prophets, their own gurus, their own teachers, their own leaders, scribe the history at the time it happened. We can. Guru Arjun Dev Ji did it. The proof is in the pudding. In the day, I don't know. Right? <laughs> A holy pudding. Uh, um, side note, have you guys ever heard people say that this is the holy pudding? I've actually heard people describe it like that. I was like, that's just, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> like after the food program, like you go want to take a gurta, they give you a little cup, and you go, oh, oh. Anyway, <laughs> sidebar. So popular one, Sulhi Te Narayan Rak. Guru Arjun Dev Ji wrote it on it. And other popular ones too, uh, we read in Shabd Hazari on a regular basis. Uh, right? Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj, Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj Vahegu, writing about the pain the, of Bairag, of separation between themselves and Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj. Writing letters to them, describing how, how much they're thirsting for their darshan, for their vision, just to see them, just to be in their sangha, just to be in their company. 
that unadulterated, pure love between a Gursik and the Guru, Mahakarna, the only love really there is in this world. Only love. And Guru Ram Das Ji, Guru Amr Arjan Dei Diwani, described this so beautifully in these letters that they've written to Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj, now that we read on a regular basis. We hear all the time. Beautiful. And just on this subject, it just comes to mind right now. I asked this question to Jathadar Baba Maharaj Singh Ji Guru Nanak Dali. One time I was doing Sangat with them. And I asked them, I was like, Baba Ji, can you tell me a little bit about, tell me what's the importance or what is the love between the Gursik and the Guru? Just tell me a little bit about it. Because in this day and age, we hear, we hear it a lot. Outside of Sikhi and inside of it, is that like peace and love, this and that, right? Love, 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 love. But what does it mean, right? I, I, a couple of years ago, I had this, this huge burning question out of my mind, is what is that love? Can someone describe it, right? Because there was all these things going around. I, I wasn't sure what to make of it. And Baba Ji said, they said that there's a beautiful kabit by a Gursik who loved the Guru. So who better, who better to describe it by Gurdas Ji? And they, they, the art in the way that they told it to me, the way I remember it is, the, the Shabd is Deepaka Pai Aavata, Deepaka Pai Aavata, Patanga Preet Reet Lag, Deepaka Rama Hange Parita Mere Jaar Hai, which means that a moth, which is attracted to light, it sees a flame and it loves that flame. It loves it so much and it's drawn towards that flame. But if it gets too close to that flame in its love, and it's almost lust for that flame, if it gets too close, it'll catch fire and it'll burn to death. But still, upon dying, that moth will love that light. It'll die loving that light, the same light that killed it. Which means, there's a type of makhi, which loves the nectar of a lotus flower, of a kamal dafur. And it loves it so much that it's the only ras that it wants in the world, and it'll approach that lotus flower, and it'll go to that lotus flower with that as, that hope that I'm going to get this nectar from it. And when it goes and sits inside the lotus flower to get that nectar, the flower closes its petals and kills it inside. And still, that makhi dies loving the very flower that killed it with that has. It doesn't break that love. A fish which lives in the water. It lives in the water, it breeds in the water. The water is everything to it. But when a fisherman comes and takes that fish out of the water and it's flopping around on land, trying to get air, trying to get something into its lungs to survive, what thought does it have in its mind if only there was water here? If only there was water here to save me. But that water doesn't have the same love for the fish. The water is not going to jump out into the boat and save the fish. But still the fish dies with that awe, that hope that that water, if it was here, it would save me. But the water doesn't return that love. And what does Pai Gurdas Ji say at the end of the shav? He said that, Dukhdai preet ki pratit ke marayna tarah that all these false loves in the world that people are dying for that is unbroken by all these animals, all these things that there's nothing else right? there's all this false love in the world that people are dying for why has a Gursik forgotten that one love that one pure adulterated love that love that Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj had for Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj. Why has the Guru Sikh forgot that one love, that Sukhdai, that gives peace? Why have we forgotten that? Anyway, that's a sidebar. That's totally not part of this presentation. The, uh, sorry, I skipped ahead. So, Uthanika, a lot of shops have backstories, have backgrounds. And there's this one that I want to talk about again very quickly, not for too long. Because I want to talk about what happens immediately after following this. Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj, while the construction of Sri Darbar Sahib, Amritsar Sahib, is happening, is going to compile Sri Al Granth Sahib. 
To do this, they need they need the collect the collected works of all the gurus. At the time, predominantly these potiyas stayed with the son of Guru Amr Das Ji Maharaj, Baba Mohan Ji, in Goindwal Sahib, where Guru Amr Das Ji primarily resided. So Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj sent by Guru Das Ji to go to Goindwal Sahib and collect these potiyas and return. Baba Mohan Ji, towards this part of their life, had become a hermit, they say. And I'm taking the story again. There's, there's probably more detailed, more thorough, and even more accurate versions of the story. Though the reason that I do this is because I like to give things. I'm not a kathavajik. I'm not a scholar. I'm not an academic. I take things straight from where they came from and just deliver them to you, right? Because I don't, I don't want any creative input into this. I don't want to make any critical decisions, here, right? About what I, what, what resonates with me, what doesn't. This is as it's dictated by Professor Pudin Singh in Book of the Ten Masters. So it's, again, Sankhav, all these stories are very short. Baba Mohanji has the Bhotiyan, and Pai Gurdas Ji has come to Baba Mohanji to retrieve these Bhotiyan. And Baba Mohanji in the house, they lock the door, they're inside. Pai Gurdas Ji knocks on the door. They called out to Baba Mohanji that, Baba Ji, we need these Bhotiyan. We want to collect. And we want, to, uh, we want to compile Sri Adgran Sahib, Guru Arjan Devi Maharaj wants to do this, and to do this they need the Pothiya. So please, can we have the Pothiya? Baba Mohanji doesn't answer the door. After a few tries, Pai Gurdas Ji gives, uh, gives in and comes back to Amritsar Sahib. Upon hearing this, Guru Arjan Devi Maharaj sends Baba Buddha Ji, the senior most, most respected Gursi. And uh, thinks that Baba Buddha Ji, or says that Baba Buddha Ji will get these Pothiya. Baba Mohanji will open the door out of respect. But Baba Buddha Ji meets the same fate that Guru Bhai Pai Gurdas Ji did. And when they return, Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj decides that they themselves must go and collect these Bhotiyan themselves. So Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj goes. They go to Goindwal Sahib. And the way Professor Puran Singh Ji writes it, is that Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj does Ishnan in Bauli Sahib, the main Gurdwara Sahib there that was constructed by Guru Amr Das Ji Maharaj at that time, when they had initially moved to Gurdwara Sahib. Did Ishnan at Bauli Sahib <coughs> took their instrument, which I believe was a sarod, but don't quote me on that one, and they go to outside of Baba Mohan Ji's house, and they start singing. They start singing the praises of Akalpurk but using the moniker Mohan or the title Mohan which means love but it's what we use in or what is used rather in Gurbani to address Akalpurk Wahiguru Mohan ka Rahu karo judari other bhaktiya too And what does Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj sing Mohan tere uche mandar mahal apara With so much love they're singing the Akalpurk's Mansions are so lofty, they're so high. There's so much sukh to be obtained there. And there's four party on the shop goes on like this. Or there's, there, I can't remember it's four exactly, sorry, I think it might be three. But the shop goes on like this, just praising a Kalpurk using the title Mohan, 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 Mohan. And Baba Mohanji is so compelled by this Kirtan to come outside, and actually there's this very small little tidbit that I love. And Gyan shares in Diyambali, right? they share this in Katha. Quoted from Suraj Prakash, I haven't read it myself, that's why I'm telling you which Katha it's from. But they say that while they were singing outside, Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj was sitting on the ground. No chatra underneath them. Aam karke jada sikhi sang gaunneya, bani paddeya, we put a chatra on the ground. And a Guru Sikh walking by said, Guru Maharaj Ji, why are you sitting on the ground? You're reciting Gurbani. So see, Aap, Guru Maharaj, your place isn't on the ground. Why are you sitting in the dirt outside Katri Sarkhanaj? And Guru Arjan Dev Ji said that no. Baba Mohan Ji, that we're here to beg. And what kind of beggar would I be if I had possessions to my name? I have nothing. I have nothing but the word of a Kalpur Wahiguru, and that's what I'll use. So Guru Arjan Dev Ji sat on the ground and sang out loud. And eventually, yes, Baba Mohan Ji did give Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj the Pothiya, and then there would be uh, the, this trip back to. Sri Amritsar Sahib when the compilation of Sri Adgran Sahib would continue. Again, very Sankhav Sahib. But that's where the Shabd comes from, Mohan Tere Uche Mandar Mahal Abara. And without the historical context, yes, it's a beautiful Shabd regardless. 
every Shabd is. Without any of the historical context, all Gurbani is perfect, it's pure. But with the historical context, there's a new understanding of it, there's a new appreciation of it. And what happened immediately after this is Guru Arjan Dev Ji was approached by Baba Muhari, Guru Amar Das Ji's other son. And they were approached by Baba Muhari Ji and they said, they, they did bring to the Guru Maharaj to Sade Karo, come have longer stay with us. And instead of leaving that day, Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj went to Baba Muhari Ji's house. And they stayed there. Langar Shakya Vichar Kiti. They did the Sangat together. I went to sleep at night. And now Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj is in Gwandal side. The town of their grandfather. Looking at it from a world view <coughs> relationship. The town of their grandfather. So obviously there's going to be, from a worldly perspective, a catch, right? An attraction to that place. There always is. When we have Sangat anywhere, we feel an immediate connection with that place. Myself, all speaking candidly, I love going to Victoria. I love the Sangat there, right? I think they're awesome. And so naturally, yeah, I have an attraction towards that place. When we go back to India, we don't stay in my in my grandfather's and my father's native friend or the native village of Talia. We stay somewhere else where we still have family because there's no family left there. But when we go there, there's a kitch, there's an attraction. So just from that worldly perspective, obviously that exists. I'm not saying from emotional attachment, but I'm saying that that's, just, that's how we are. So Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj, Amrit Vele Uthe, the next day, Ashnan Kita, Semran Kita, Japji Sajida Bhat Kevan Kita, and after that they went to a nearby Nadi. And they approached the home of Guru Amr Das Ji Maharaj and their father, Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj. And, the, um, and I'm quoting this from um, Sampraday Tika, uh, Satka Paul Singh, Amir Pandar. If you want to fact check, I would like to give my source. So, they went to the home, and as it says in there, that Akhamit Jal Agya, Akhan Jal that they became teary eyed. And first, they did Namaskar, they Matha take to Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj's room, their grandfather's, and then they Matha take to Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj's room, their father's. Chongra Lake Abhi Askita. Then they told the six to get Kada Prashad made. They made Prashad, they did Ardas there. Kada Prashad, once they. Uh, After that, Guru Arjan Devi sat down and called over Baba Sundarji, another relative from the family, who was senior to Guru Arjan Devi Maharaj in age. And Guru Arjan Devi Maharaj asked Baba Sundarji, that today I feel the bairag, the detachment of my gurus. Remember, this is the same Guru Arjan Devi Maharaj that wrote Mira Mahalocha Guru Tarsantari. Right? That same pure bairag, that strong desire. Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj said that, Aaj Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj bhi badi yaad hai. Right? That I'm, I feel, I, like I feel the bad art. And they said, please tell me, please tell me that when Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj left this world, what Upadesh did they give to the Sangat? What lessons did they give to the Sangat before departing? And although Baba Sundar Ji ne Ramkali Sad di Bani Ucharan Kitti. Baba Sundar Ji writes this Bani, Ramkali Sad. And a Sad is something that's typically saying when, when people pass away. Sad, which means call, right? It's the call of the Sadhya Uthi Nanka. Jihad Tiri Lakhya Deha Hukum Kumai. And Baba Sundarji Dirucharnatas Bani Ramkali Sad, which details what exactly happened when Guru Amar Das Ji's sanskar happened. And this is the story which I feel like captures everything. This is the relationship between history and Qurbani. 
Because not only does it go over actual physical events that took place, Muhuri Putsan Mukhua, which comes in there, but it's also just filled with so many lessons. Right? And it echoes other parts of Sikh history, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji Maharaj in Delhi. When Anandpur Sahib Ji is not asked for a place, they send a letter to Lokma Allah Nama. This is the relationship for me between Gurbani and history. And the very, very popular line, or more, more well known line, I should say, from this shout Ante Sat Gurbolia, Mapichai Kirtan Kare Hunir Barnjiu. That finally the true Guru said, When I am gone, sing Kirtan in praise of the Supreme in Nirvana. That's the Sikhi Tanak translation. But what a simple lesson, right, to take from these things. And all these shabd of Uthanikas, right, even Sulihite Narayan and Raf, they all have these lessons attached to them. These are examples. In that shabd, when Guru Arjun Devi talks about Sulihi Khan, in the end they talk about the relationship between Agadpur and the Jana, the Seva, right? And how Agadpur always protects the Seva. So, just such a beautiful story, Guru Arjun Devi Maharaj asking about their grandfather, something so so basic that we can all relate to, right? Just tell me about my an ancestors. And again, that same Guru Amr Das Ji Maharaj we're talking about that wrote the Shabd Babaniya Kahaniya, what Sabut Kare. So, essentially, Sikh history is 550 plus years. My math might be off, so you do the math yourself. Uh, has it been 550 plus? 1460. If I'm starting in 1416. Someone does math for me. Someone does math. Who, who does math? Who's an engineer? Aren't you an engineer? Go ahead. What is it? Aren't you an engineer too? What is this? 1469, 2016. Has it been, has it been 550 yet? No. No? Okay, so 550. Huh? Yeah, it has. It is 547. 550, Lagya Shagi. That's what they see on Sikh history is 550. <laughs> Years of the pra sorry, years of the practical application of Gurbani. Simple as that, right? The reason these stories of Guru Sahib and the Guru Sikhs are so important is because they did it. They they walked the path, right? They walked the path that we're trying to walk. So, the next part's going to be fun because I forgot what the next slide is. So let's find out together. <laughs> Hanji. So let's go back to Sikh. <laughs> That even though the people change, the gurus never change. Gurus never change. All such do God such happy such not of course he that. Why Nandalaji writes it most beautifully. Not most, but quite beautifully. They write Nanak so Angad Gur Devana, so Amradas Har Sevana, so Ramadas, so Arjuna, so Har Gubinda Har Parsana. So karta har raya da tarnam, so har krisna agam aparnam, so teg bahadr sat sarupna, so gur gobin singh har karupna, sab eko eko ekna nahi pe edna ka chupi dekna. They're all the same, one of the same, sab eko eko ekna, all ten gurus, Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj included. It's the same gaddi, the same guru, from the very beginning. The gurus never change, but people might have to go six around, in physical sarup, the ones that are here present on the world. But the Gurbani never has, the Guru never has. And that's what I want to do. The next two stories that again I'm going to gloss over because I'm doing a lot of that today are, I feel like, reminiscent of the same shabd. And that shabd that I want to talk about is this one. Tanamana kaat kaat sab arpi vich agni aap jilai. It's from, again, a shabd we hear often, Koi an milala nira pritam piyara, right? And what is, this shabd is talking about that, that, that vichola, that person that comes between you and a god work, the one that joins you with them. And what you would do, how you sacrifice yourself to this person. The entire shabd. And the pankti, this specific pankti, your love for this person would be so great, that I would cut my mind and body apart into pieces and offer them all to you. I would burn myself in fire. By Parminder Singh Ji, who established Kunan Academy, my favorite Kathapa Isab ever did. 
and I grew up listening to his katha. Grew up as in in high school. Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, they talk about Guru Gobind Singh Ji. English, Punjabi, Chinese, Mandarin, any language, this is hands down the best katha I've ever heard in my life. Hands down, any language in the world. It is the most valuable, I think, hour and six minutes ever spent. And I think it's it, out of sanghranagacademy.com because the video page is down still, but uh, is it up now? Oh, but it's on YouTube. Just type in it, by Praminder Singh Guru Gobind Singh. And you'll listen to it, it's amazing. And by Praminder Singh just said something really powerful. And something that resonated with me, and I think I was 15 when I first heard it. And before they start talking about Guru Gobind Singh and praising their Guru, they said it's so easy for a son to sit here and praise his father. If I asked you guys to do it, you could all tell me all the good qualities about your father. He said it's way harder for someone's son to, without reservation, without discrimination, without prejudice, praise someone else's father. And that entire katha, he just talks about different examples of people, Aam Bande, praising Guru Gobind Singh Ji and Guru Sikhi, and how great it is. It's amazing. It changed, changed my worldview forever. And so, I love primary sources in history. I mean, I'm a history junkie, I love primary sources. I love reading something, knowing that these are the words, these are the thoughts that the people of the time were experiencing. And there's a great primary source in Sikh history called the Dabistan. I might be pronouncing it wrong. I've only ever read it in writing. Which is about a, a few dozen pages that were written for, uh, by a researcher from the Middle East who had come to Punjab in the time of Guru Har Gobind Sahib and Guru Har Rai Sahib. And he had taken this, oh sorry, there's a lot of feedback. He has taken this report um, on the 6th and just kind of handed it to his person. And it's part of this bigger book which is just about religions in India at that time, right? Which, I mean, looks similar to the religions that are there now. And it's the first kind of extensive primary source on Sikh history. And this writer, and it's contested who the writer is, this writer was actually quite close to Guru Har Rai Sahib Ji. They, they stayed together for quite some time, and he had met Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji prior, and he had also attended Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji's funeral. And I want to read you what he wrote. Again, he was, he was a scholar from the Middle East, and he was watching this happen, and here's the translation. Um, which I haven't changed at all, of what he wrote, and I think he wrote in Persian originally. So it's about a Sikh by the name of Raja Ram. On Sunday, the Guru departed from this world. When his body was put upon firewood and the pyre was lighted, and the flames rose, Raja Ram, by name, a Rajput, threw himself into the fire. He walked a few steps through the fire in order to reach the Guru's feet and put his own head upon the soles of his feet and did not move, till life became extinct. extinct. Then a judge boy who attended on the Guru's son-in-law jumped into the fire. Thereafter, a number of people thought of jumping, but Guru Harai stopped them. <coughs> Chills. First time I read that, I literally dropped my book. <laughs> literally. It's crazy. Right? Miraja Ram literally walked through fire for his good, literally, be it a few seconds. Can you imagine? I mean, we say it all the time to little Gurmat camp kids, right? Is that, oh yeah, Guru Arjan Devi Salam have you ever touched, have you ever touched hot chow before? They're like, yeah, right? And, uh, yeah. and then you, but really, a Gursik had this much love for their, gur, for their Guru, that they jumped into the fire. I mean, not at anyone's request, I mean, we're six, we come from the same lineage, that was instrumental in stopping the practice of sati, right, in Punjab. But that love was so, so pure that it, never, uh, that it was nothing for Raja Ram Rajput. Can you think spending your life in the presence of Guru Sahib, and we do, which we often forget, living in the presence of Guru Sahib and then seeing Guru Sahib gone in some respect, right? In the form that we've known them in our entire life. Again, it's just raw human connection, right? Uh, along with the spiritual. So, that's Guru Sahib's time, in the time of Guru Sahib Deitari Sulukhmich, right? Let's go forward. Um, 
300 years, Lagesharthi, Sankarnan Karna said. Very quickly, 1920s, the rise of the Singh Sabha movement, right? A lot of Mahants that controlled the Gurdwaras at the time were very corrupt, or a, a significant portion of them anyway, were very corrupt. And there was a lot of mispractice happening in the Gurdwara sides. 1920, in Narkana Sahib, there was a Mahant by the name of Narayan Das. And Narayan Das, what he used to do, um, the allegations are huge. It, 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 they, they vary from, um, from, from like drinking and stuff like that to all-out rape happening in the Gurdwara on multiple occasions to minors, right? It's hugely tragic. So, two Gursiks, two Dathal two Gursiks decided that they're going to do Morcha. They're going to protest at Narkana Sahib in 1920 to go take this Gurdwara side back and the way they were going to do this was they were going to go, and again, this is very Sankhaved, which actually by Gurdiv Singh does Gaha on this, and that's on the Gurang Khadi YouTube channel, and you can check that out, right? This is very, very quickly. They went to Narkana side with the intent of holding a Dawan, right? And one person by the name of Pai Lakshman Singh sat on Tabya, and the other Gursik sat in the Dawan hall. Now Mahanta Narayan Das, knowing that this was coming, had hired a group of thugs, just people off the street, weren't they? Um, and estimate to go as high as 400 of them, I believe. And he'd hired these people um, and armed them, guns, everything. And in the Gurdwara side, in Narkana side, again, February 1920, the anniversary is just coming up, they opened fire um, and they, they just wiped out these Gursiks. They killed a significant portion of them. Again, estimates go from like 85 to the hundreds of how many they killed. But some were tied to trees and set on fire. Some were literally, literally cut piece by piece. Right? All to preserve the sanctity of Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj for that same pure, unadulterated love that Raja Ram Rajput felt for Guru Hargobind Sahib Maharaj. The same one, for the same Guru. They felt that, they felt that pain of the, of the disrespect happening to Sri Guru Granth Sahib. So they went and they were burned alive, they were cut piece by piece. And along the way, on two separate occasions, when the, when the issue, when the Circumstance had come up where some people wanted to turn back and call off the Murcha. The Singhs had gotten together and they took a Hukumnama. Right? They took a Hukumnama and both times, as I've heard it in Katha, again, I can't remember who's Katha now, I apologize. And as I've read, two times when this issue came up of who's turning back or if we're turning back or not, both times. The Hukum Nama came, Koi Arn Milavan Mira Pritam Pira. Tan Man Kaat Kaat Sab Arpi Vich Agni Aap Jilai. This was preordained. This was written by Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, by Nakaal Pur Pohim. Same Guru, same love, same Gurbani, same history. 300 years apart. So, again the fun part where I don't know what's coming next. Again? So let's find out. Yes, okay. This might be controversial. The pursuit of Sikh history for a good Sikh without spiritual intention is an egotistical endeavor. And you can replace Sikh history with anything. Any kind of knowledge, any kind of passion, any kind of talent. Just because the word Sikh is there doesn't automatically make it a, uh, what was the word, nishkam, I can't think of the English, Alt altruistic, an altruistic endeavor, pursuit. If you're reading Sikh history, for nothing more than I want to gain so much knowledge so people will ask me questions because I'll be this Gyanni that's evil right I have I have no I have not no but I have very little respect for that and I, the reason I, I mentioned this is because we have this kind of um, complex where we think that someone has X amount of knowledge that makes them X amount of a person right that they know this much, so they must be this great. And I, th I, that's the only reason I put this in, it's completely just off topic with everything else I'm talking about. Despite this, it's never, never a bad thing to read Sikh history, to do a bias, 
right? To serve the Guru. It's never a bad thing. And the reason I say this again is because of another complex. It's because people like, and this is a, this is a great one, that, oh yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't get involved in the community because, you know, Seva, like, if I'm not really doing Seva, it's just, you know, you know, it's all ego, you know, why do why do this and that, <laughs> right? And I say, I'll tell you what, I said the two, Aparati, do not do that, right? That the sinner will, will duck, will bow twice as, twice as much as the truly humble person. We'll put on that show. I'm not saying everyone's putting on a show, but if you replaced sick history and said that, oh yeah, I don't do X because it will affect my ego, my ego is too big and I'm not really doing it honestly, with anything else, you sound like an idiot. Okay? Like, for example, I don't play video games because when I play video games, I don't feel like I'm doing it from the heart. I just feel like I want to get the highest score and then, you know, and you know, that's not really, from, that's not really true. I'm not being true to myself. <laughs> Thank you. I got one <laughs> But you sound like a goof, okay? And the reason I'm very much passionate about this, and I feel like, I feel like you four, and specifically, I'm pointing at you guys because they hear most of my rants, right? Um, can sympathize with the fact that I say this all the time is that just because something is not good for you doesn't mean it's not a good thing to do. Has anyone said that I don't do Simran at home, lock my door and do Simran because if I do Simran, I feel like my ego is going to get bigger and I'm not doing it from the heart? I've never in my life heard anyone say that. Right? You say that keep doing Simran, right? Keep doing Seva with they keep living in Gursikhi Jeevan. Don't concentrate on your ego, the ego will take care of itself. I heard that a million times. That piece of advice, right? When people are pursuing the spiritual path and they're pursuing a Gursikhi Jeevan. Why are Seva and Simran any different? Again, totally off topic. But just let that sit with you, okay? Anyway. Um, and the, so, this entire body from Asadiwad, which is, uh, sorry, Sulok from Asadiwad, is about um, acquiring all this knowledge, right? And you can acquire all the knowledge in the world, the, the point becomes Padiya Jeti Arja Padiya Jeti Saas, right? Read your entire life for as many breaths as you have. Nanak Lekha Ikagal Hor Hamna Chakna Chak. That, and I love, I, love the, I, I love the translation specifically here, I don't say that often. But, oh, not a, only thing, one thing is of any account, the rest is useless babbling. <laughs> I don't talk to people, I love useless babbling. Sounds like a Harry Potter quote. Um, <laughs> but it's true, right? I mean, acquiring all this knowledge means absolutely nothing. If you're not using it, if you're not using it to pursue that one thing of having a Kursikki given, of Seva and Sinra, Right? Again, that was an aside. So, um, and I'm going to come back to this point in a more concrete way. But for now, um, listen, learn, practice is that something like that. Right? That's what we say here. Um, listen, learn. Um, you might not have learned a whole lot, but you listened quite great. What are we going to practice now? Um, I don't know how long I've been talking. About an hour? Plus an hour? Okay. Um, this, this track is one hour and 18 minutes. So if it ends, it means I've talked too long. <laughs> Um, and I'll just say what they have to do. Find your place in history. This is what I think today's practice is. Find your place in history. Find that moment, that person, that thing in history that connects with you and make it your own. Right? Apranali that's what we say in Punjabi, right? Make it your own. Take ownership of it. Say that this is mine. I know we say we say to younger kids, especially that way, you shouldn't have a favorite guru, right? And you shouldn't, yeah, it's true, there, it's one guru. But certain qualities of certain gurus are going to, as a human, are going to speak to you more. Don't be afraid to embrace those, right? It's what makes Guru Sahib, makes you have a relationship with Guru Sahib. And the Guru Sikhs as well. It's like, yes, I love all Guru Sikhs saying, that's great, right? And that's good, you should. But don't be afraid that if you really, really love something, and you want to learn about something, love it, right? Be unapologetic in your pursuit for the knowledge of that one thing, because that is going to strengthen your connection with Sikhi. And I don't do this often on stage, but I feel like I kind of got put here up for a reason, which is for the history of Sikhs in Canada. And so I'll talk to you a little bit about my journey with it. I usually don't talk about my personal life up on stage, or my personal journey. Um, but this slide is titled, My Personal Journey. <laughs> <laughs> that fine gentleman is Shaheed Pai Mir Um My entire, I feel like at this moment, my life revolves around Pai Mir Right? Um, and the reason I use Pai Mewasing as this example is that's what I feel like I've done with Pai Mewasing is that 
I've taken ownership. It's kind of like he's mine. It just sounds bad, right? It sounds really bad. He's mine, you can't have him. He didn't get shady for you. <laughs> Kidding. Um, but, like, I sincerely feel like I have a relationship with Five Minutes. That if Five Minutes walked into those doors, I'd be like, why cause that? What fuck that? What's up? Let's chill. Right? And that brings me closer to Guzai. I feel like, in my own superficial way, it does. Right? And again, like I said, I'll take you through this right now. If you look here, that's a statement that Pai Meva Singh made, and I'm not going to go into the history of Pai Meva Singh, you should have come to the book. <laughs> um, but that's a statement made by Pai Zab, where he offered $250 um, cash to the gentleman Bela, right? The assassin who killed Pai Bhag Singh, uh, Pai Bhadan Singh. Why Mila Singh just offered him 250 bucks outright. That's the equivalent of about $5,000 now. Just stop going to the immigration department. Right? Right here, when I read this the first time, I read by Mila Singh's words. I read by Mila Singh talking. And that spoke to me. That this person was here. He was here. Maybe not in Surrey. No one came to Surrey back then. <laughs> Alright? It was Abbotsford or on the other side. Kind of skipped over this area for good reason. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was so you guys could all live here after. Um, but they came, these streets of New Westminster, Vancouver, Abbotsford, they walked in. These are the words they used. And that hit me. This right here is Pai Mewasing's statement in court, which is like 12 pages long or something. Pai Mewasing speaking. This is what Pai Mewasing wanted to say, wanted us to hear. New was being recorded. It hit me. I drive by the street, and if anyone here goes to Douglas College, this is right beside your school. Right? By New Westing's funeral procession. This is Fraser Mills, a few blocks from my house. If anyone lives in Coquitlam, New Westminster, it's pretty close to you too. Right? It was so real to me. Kamala Guru Brad and like Second Avenue, Vancouver, first Kodala. All so real to me. And I was like, I just want to learn about by New Westing. Right? I want my Mewasing to bring me closer to Guru Sahib. This right here was um, lost to history for about a hundred years. Um, until it, well, whenever it went into the archives to now. Um, it's a ticket to view by Mewasing's hanging, right? To actually watch it, like you would watch it like a Knuts game. It was an admission ticket. And I've never got the privilege of seeing this and holding it, but um, this was because we stumbled, uh, a few of my colleagues and I, stumbled across uh, a reference number in the city archives at New Westminster that pointed to this. And when I saw it, when I took it in my hand, or not that, but the picture, it was like everything came together. History came to me. This, all of this stuff right here, <coughs> is why I feel like I have a relationship with Pai Mewa Singh. I have a three-dimensional picture of who this person was. Because I spent hours of my life reading, doing bajar, listening to stories about Pai Mewa Singh. Right? And we should all find that thing. History might not be our thing. But I think it's important. Babarniya, kahaniya, put sabut kareen, right? from a Gursikhi standpoint, to at least have one part of Sikh history that you love, and you make your own, and you pursue, and you pursue with your heart, and all your passion. And again, the reason I put these three things on the side is because this is what I got to do with my passion, right? I mean, no credit to myself, it's to the wonderful Gursikhs of the Lower Mainland, is this is the history that I got to bring with these Gursikhs to the wider community, or that everyone got to share with me and my passion, right? And some of you guys have come to the event, some of you guys can do all of them. If you did, gold star, right? But I got to share that with you guys. And then it was by Mewa Singh Se Shahibi in the present, right? It's happening right now. I mean, it's always happening right now, but we're benefiting from it at this very moment when these things are happening, when we're coming closer to Guru Sahib. Because that's all by someone at the end of the day. Right? Was a place of peace 
were his brothers and sisters and at that time his countrymen were safe where they could freely practice their faith without persecution, without oppression as they were meant to. So I'm just saying down here, same thing. Right? Came here, the activist activist. A sant, a sabai. Sant Justin came down here for that very reason. Fought for our rights for that very reason. So, this is my journey. And everyone's journey is different. So that's why, again, with practice, is my request to you today is to channel your passion into Sikhi. Into your Sikhi. Whether you love doing math, though, by, by the last thing, I don't think anyone does. Um, whether whether you love history, myself, which, which is film and theater, theater, um, anything it is, whatever your passion it is, passion is, channel your Sikhi into that. Channel your Sikhi into that. And don't separate your other link from your, your Sikhi path. Because when they complement each other, when they inform each other, I mean, that's living it like as an all-around good Sikh. So myself, I want to give you an example of how I feel like I've channeled my passion into Sikhi. My, my passion for history, anyway. And I, because I love history, um, often when I'm reading, and I have specific times in global history, um, and specific regions which I really like, uh, they speak to me. And I'm always looking for stories which can inform me to be um, a more complete human being and thereby a more complete Sikh. Um, and I want to talk about an amazing individual by popularly just known as Mansoor now, um, who was a Sufi mystic in the 9th century. And he lived in the uh, Abbasid Caliphate, for whoever knows what that is. And he was just carefree, and by all means he was just, um, just a complete anomaly of an individual. Back then, if you're practicing um, if you're practicing spirituality as a Sufi, is information was very privileged, it was very limited, right? You only got so much information at so much time in your life. Um, and the masses, you didn't share your spirituality with the masses. You didn't teach the Quran to everyone, right? You didn't teach other parts uh, of spirituality to everybody. It wasn't meant for everyone. It was meant for this elite. But not for Mansur. Mansur used to walk around just dropping truth bombs, right? all the time on everyone. He wanted to share that knowledge with every single person. That everyone should have the agency and capacity to become a, a, like, to become a spiritual person. And he was, in what we say in Punjabi, a mustanga. Complete and utter mustanga. And what he ended up doing at one time is he started saying the words al -haq. And the word al -haq in Islam means the truth. And in Islam, if you know that, there's 99 names for Allah, right? Which no person is allowed to make themselves, right? Because those names are reserved for Allah. So when he was saying al Haq, he was saying, I am the truth. Thereby, he was saying, I am Allah. Okay? Abbasid Caliph, you don't, you don't want to do that now, right? Without people flipping out and going crazy, right? I mean, right wings will be on you like nobody's business. If you start going around saying, I am God. I mean, ninth century or at uh, this time, 10th century, was even worse, right? So he's going around saying, al haq al haq al haq saying, I am the truth. And people are warning him that stop saying this, You're, you know, like, let people find out. But eventually it became so wet, widespread that they arrested him and put him in jail. But in jail he would continue, al haq al haq I am the truth, I am the truth. And people are saying, this is blasphemous, you're calling yourself Allah, this is absolutely ridiculous, what are you doing? And he would say other crazy things that uh, things like Allah is in my is in my tistad. Allah is in my is in my jola. He'd say stuff like that. I'm like, what are you talking about? But it was an avastha, right? It was an avastha. And we read in Gurbani too. Jab ham hote, tab tu nahi, ab tu hi, main nahi. Hum tu hi tu hai guru. That's all that's left, right? Is you. Kabir tu tu karta, tu hua. Mujh mera hana hu. That I'm not left. That's what Mansur was saying is that I have become one with Akal Purak, with Allah, with Wahiguru. So he's saying, Anal Haq, Anal Haq, and he's warned repeatedly, repeatedly, stop, stop, stop. And there's meetings and there's, and there's hearings and trials and all these things 
but he wouldn't stop. He persisted. And then one day, what happened? One day, he's sentenced to death. He's going to be executed. And he's taken to his execution. And he's cut limb by limb. Not by money sink, but major limbs, right? Arms, hands, shoulders, throat, like that kind of stuff. He's cut limb by limb. And then his tongue is cut out. His tongue is cut out because that's what he was committing, that's what he was blaspheming with, essentially. But the stories that came out of his execution are amazing. Because they cut off his hands, and what did he do? Or sorry, they cut off his legs first, I believe. They cut off his, they cut off his feet. And he laughed at the executioner. He said, you've cut off my feet so I can't walk on this earth, but I'm one step away from heaven, try to cut that. I'm on super gangster. <laughs> cut off his hands, and what did he do? By this time, a lot of major body parts had been cut. He took the blood spewing from his arms, the stumps of his arms, and he painted his face with them. He painted his face. And people were like, what are you doing? And Mansoor said, that I've lost so much blood that my I'm turning pale face, right? Pale face means that you're scared. That I've turned yellow. He's like, I've painted it red because this is the love that I have. He's like, I don't want you to tell people that my face was yellow out of fear because of you. He painted his face. face. Sorry. And then they cut off his tongue and then eventually they beheaded him at the end. They burned him the next day. And then eventually they threw his ashes into the wind. But again, burning, going back to Soli Khan, is considered um, almost blasphemous in Islam because then your body can't be resurrected. I mean, I won't speak for another faith, that's just kind of an outline. And just one tiny little story, a little aside, is the day before his execution, someone had actually come to see him, and I can't remember who it was exactly, but they came to see him, and they asked him the same question that I asked um, to an extent to Baba Man Singh, which was, what is love? And Mansur replied to him that love is today, tomorrow, and the day after. That is the day, it wasn't the day before rather, it was the day of his execution that he was asked that question. That day he was burned, uh, that day he was executed, the next day he was burned, the third day his ashes were thrown into the wind. That's me channeling my passion into Sikhi. I can read that and I think, oh my god, I'm a terrible Sikh. Actually, actually you know, I'm struggling some, some of this, why do I agree here, right? Alright, um, that's what I should be doing. So channel your passion into Sikhi and eventually, ultimately, make history. Make history. It's never been a Khalsa's job to just be one of the one of the pack. Right? We always talk about Guru Gobind Singh is saying that I'm going to make a, a Khalsa that stands out in a crowd, right? It's a it's a it's a Gurmuth camp classic. Right? But that's what we say. And all these t-shirt companies like to say like unique, one in a million, this and that kind of stuff, right? But that's your appearance, that's easy. Stop cutting your hair, three seconds, or you go dirty, you're good to go, and stand up. But to act that way, to act like one in millions, way harder. Carl's here to make history. That's our practice, make history. Make history by channeling your passion into Sikhi. Or even easier, just be the best Sikh in the world. <laughs> But make history. And you're only going to make history through Abhyas. And the Abhyas of Naam, Gurmantarja, Gurbani, absolutely. But also the Abhyas of Seva. I beg and plead with you guys that never, never turn your back on Seva. That's my job. Never turn your back on Seva. Because, again, it's that same story that, oh, I don't do it in the public because some people will judge you or they'll think you're better sick than you are. That's your challenge to face. That's nobody else's fault. Or, hey, people will think I'm a great sick. Let the people think that. It's your job to deal with it. That's part of the seva, right? Is dealing with all the necessary consequences. <coughs> don't ever think that seva takes a backseat to Simran because eventually, ultimately, they're one and the same. 
आज पर एक नहीं आती, right? They're one and the same. Back to Gurbani. Is naam hamara puja dev, naam hamara gurki se. They're one and the same. And they only work as as long as they go together, right? We always say the two the two wings of the same bird, right? Bani bana seva samr. And it's true though. It's a played out analogy, but it's true. Make history. Only gonna make history by doing seva. Don't take my word for it. Eventually, and I always have to mention, you're sitting here because history was made. Yeah. I I can't. I can't disagree with myself, obviously. But I would have a hard time hearing a disagreement from you guys with that. We're sitting here because history was made. I saw history made on a daily basis with my Gandhi Zay. On a daily basis. You wouldn't believe. And that doesn't mean you have to change the world. It at least means do the right thing around yourself. Right? Change the world around yourself. You have the capacity through your seva and through your simran to do that. Make history. Bhai Parminder Singh, Bibi Rinagor, Bhai Tanjit Singh made history right here. And there's there's a little thing um, that's been crossing my mind as of late, and I'll end with this. It's a good time. It sounds like the end of the show. I'm going to end with this. I remember being in grade eight at the time of the funeral, and I don't want to talk too much about it. But at the time of the funeral, of these three books six, and I remember reading in the province newspaper, um, or one of the newspapers, that it, that the funeral for Irina Gaur and Pramendra Singh, because Janji Singh's body had been sent back to India for this and God, was one of the biggest recorded funerals in BC history, right? I think they might have been saying the biggest recorded at that time. I can't remember exactly. It was. I wish I had the picture to show you because this is just coming to mind now. In 1915 and 1914, um, I'm gonna go back. By Mewa Singh's funeral, and Inspector William C. Hopkinson's funeral, the person that Mewa Singh assassinated, both of those took place. This is by Mewa Singh's funeral. 1914 in U.S. Minster, 250 to 400 Gosiks showed up that day, which is a huge number. I mean, at that time, it was defining. It was it was a big impression, but it was a drop in the water of BC politics and BC news. It was tiny, right? Because Hopkinson's funeral was a few months prior to this, and Hopkinson's funeral was attended by people from all over the world. It was huge. There was parades. There was there was guns, the like salutes, and there was there was a march through downtown Vancouver. And his casket was um, wrapped with the British flag, the Union Jack. It was a huge, huge event. And this was tiny. This was nothing. This was negligible. A hundred years later, the biggest few recorded funeral in BC history was for two or six. Make history. I apologize, I made many mistakes, many mistakes while speaking. And a lot of the sakhi I told I want to reiterate, um, for most of them, unless I told you otherwise, were single sourced. And I single sourced them for the sake of just this presentation, right? There's so many resources available online, um, and I encourage you, not just online, but actually pick up a book um, and look into those things yourself. If you want more sources on them, I mean, you can always consult Suraj for God for the older South Um And you can consult, there's a bunch of people here you can talk to about being the more in-depth, the more, uh, like, yeah, the more three-dimensional perspective of those stories. I was just putting them into the wider context of today's subject. So, um, at the end, I ask for your forgiveness, for Guru Maharaj's forgiveness. And it's the same uh that I started with is that Gurbani and Gursikhi have a relationship, uh, sorry, Gur Gurbani and history have a very, very deep, deep relationship, right? They're one, they're two of the same one thing, and that's to establish yourself with the Gursikhi Jiva through Seva and Simran. And so I really, I'm going to say it again, 
is make history. Make history. Poor Jukma, Wahi Guruji, 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 W